What's going on, my people? Welcome back to the Live Capital YouTube channel where life is for the taking. It is the host himself, Ted Talk Money. Today, my people, as you guys can see, the market is waking up. You all can see it right here. BTC has officially broke past 43K. We are in a greedy sentiment. As you guys can see, the market is quite bullish. Right now, at the time of this recording, the crypto market is recording a $1.57 trillion global market cap with about a 2% increase in, uh, well, just the increase, of course, in volume. Uh, in about 24 hours, $66.5 uh, $7 billion worth of volume has changed hands, exchanged hands in the past 24 hours. You all can see here Ethereum is at 2200 with XRP here at its 61 cents. Who's really doing some winning? Ordi, Casper, and as well Pepe. There's also some other winners that are doing, I mean, just crazy business. This other project here called Big Time is up 68% just today. You guys can see it's going for about really hitting some all-time highs there at about 98 cents. Previously today, it was there about 56 cents. So fascinating times we have ourselves here in this crypto market. Today, I really want to touch on some of the latest and greatest that's happening here. Listen to what, what Watcher Guru CNBC has to say about Bitcoin. Dig this. Oh, listen. Thing I've heard it called the having or the having, but yeah. either one. We're getting to that in April, I think, right? Yep. Um, and that's been a bullish thing before. I sort of wonder, is it the same thing, though? Is that already getting priced in, or is, this, is there something technical that actually happens that would make it be priced in closer to the event? So, not, the event? Um, so what we've seen historically is that the 12 to 16 months after a happening is the best performance of Bitcoin. So that's what everybody's thinking about. Um, this time, you know, this time might be different because the price of Bitcoin's higher. We now only have, I think it's 900 Bitcoin a day that come out, so that gets cut in half. It's not a lot of Bitcoin, but what it does do is it makes Bitcoin more scarce than gold. So for the first time in history, you have an asset that is more scarce than gold. In what way more scarce? Uh, let's call it a stock to flow ratio. So uh, the amount of Bitcoin mined every year divided by the amount, uh, amount outstanding, same with gold. And now there'll be, quote unquote, less Bitcoin than gold mined on a relative basis. All right. Now. Question about the the having. I first time in history here, folks. First time in history. So while all this is going on, you have whales accumulating Ethereum, whales are accumulating Link, and all of these other assets. And some have been really saying that the smart money that's been inflowing into the crypto market has been going towards a Link. Now, some, of course, as you all can see, Ethereum has been doing a few different moves, but there are certain assets I think that would be important for you all to get in involved with. Rentcom, Rentcom RNT, they recently put it out about their progress is constant with numerous plans in the pipeline. We will keep you guys up to date with all the upcoming announcements as they finalize a little bit more on that date. Just so you guys can understand a little bit more about how it would work. Rencom is actually going to be offering tokens to be used and minted over on the XRPL for rental activity. So, for example, if you own a home or a vehicle or a motorcycle, you can literally utilize cryptocurrency to re to receive rewards for just holding, for example, if somebody is going to pay you rent for your rentals in RNT. You'd be embarking on this journey of financial growth, having your rental funds ready in advance while other people are going to be receiving. You're going to be receiving that annual reward of 10 percent for just holding RNT tokens. Guys, if you really want to see about the tokenomics or how this whole thing breaks down, each RNT token, there's a total supply token supply of 100 million. Right now, it's bridged on the BSC and as well BNB. But this is this is actually going to be linked soon over into the xrpl this multinational network bridging its rnt token over to the xrpl over here on this side we are definitely excited about hearing about this because honestly this thing has been flourishing since its announcement over onto the xrpl so we're looking forward to the new developments that are going to be happening 
You all can see here at the live chart, it's looking like a pretty good entry price right now. It's going for about 17 cents per coin. Um, if you are familiar how the BSC works, BNB, you take wrapped BNB and then just swap it over on Pancake Swap to get these RNT tokens. Also, all you have to do once you actually are seeing here, you can actually receive free rent tokens if you'd like. You just go here to the claim RNT link uh, on the website and then head over to their telegram and let them know lift capital sent me lift capital sent me and they will be sending you out free rnt tokens really looking forward to that also nextly right here guys if you're not familiar with our channel we also want to let everyone know about regulations are coming well it's looking like the, the African nation, Kenya, is going to be passing a bill to regulate crypto tax. Really interesting. As you guys know, the SEC IRS here is actually tightening up on these on this tax. The bill positions crypto assets to securities and introduces capital gains tax on crypto in wallets and exchanges. It aims to provide legal clarity and prevent financial crimes associated with digital currencies. The bill requires Kenyans to pay capital gains tax on crypto transactions and reporting all crypto transactions in Kenyan shillings. So putting it out there, letting you guys know that these crypto regulations are coming closer and closer. Now, in regards to regulation talk and of course the ETF. If you guys don't know the market really is in this phase right now to where we're looking forward to an approval of a Bitcoin spot ETF. We've gone over a few different times. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe because you definitely want to learn about how ETFs are going to work. Well, you have a grayscale CEO saying approval is a matter of if not when. Listen to his sentiment and perspective on the securing of the approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF. The Grayscale CEO has expressed optimism on securing the approval. If Grayscale operates the industry's largest trust, which is the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, it hopes to convert it to a full-fledged spot Bitcoin ETF. So now in this latest interview, the CEO maintains that there is optimism that this product is what the company has spent uh, the last few years preparing for this securing of this, this approval here. So the initial step is going to be converting the GBTC ETF um, that was originally met with rejection. But now the SEC is going to be reviewing uh, the verdict in good faith as it chose not to appeal the decision as expected of it. In the latest update, both the SEC and Grayscale have been in communication, a move many consider positive for the potential launch of a much awaited spot BTC product. That is great. That's going to be providing more and more bullish sentiment to the market. So also the Indian government now has revealed 28 crypto service providers are registered with their financial intelligence unit. Again, the reason why this is so important is so you can learn exactly how these governments are moving behind the scenes and how they're 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 arranging for this new financial system so the CBDCs can operate seamlessly. Keep this in mind, even if you're not in India, India has been stringent on their Bitcoin uh, crypto regulations. The financial minister has asked by a parliament member to provide the details of all the registered entities as per the AML and CFT guidelines for reporting entities. Well, you all can see it. These are some of the, the registered entities that are involved here. FinGenie Tech, Angelic Info Tech, Next Gen Dev Solutions. All of this. And they're going to be, you see here, Wazer X, Bitbins, OnRamp. These are all registered, registered reported entities that are going to be operating within the bounds of India. So keep that in mind. Next thing right here is going to be in regards to Algorand news. If you guys don't know, the Central Bank of Italy and South Korea announced a memorandum, a MOU in the development and deployment of CBDCs. So if you're new to the channel, if you're really coming in from the crypto streets, just really coming in from just other parts, we've been informing our community about central bank digital currencies and how they are going to be inevitable. CBDCs are going to be a digital version of the fiat that you use right now. So for example, if you're here in the state, States, a digital dollar, a digital peso, digital yen, they're all going to be coming. So Italy and South Korea are now working together to cooperate, make interoperability. The reason why I'm showing you this is, again, what you're seeing here 
is the interoperability for the future because this this MOU is going to be sh- paving the way for the operations for the next 50 to 100 plus years, okay? So Italy's central bank, Banca d'Italia, announced that it's uh, through official channels that they've entered into a MOU with the Bank of Korea regarding IT and payment systems. Specifically, it mentioned issues related to real time gross settlement and CBDCs. Okay, very important. Again, for how you're an XRP holder, you have to understand that that's exactly what XRP is, a actual digital real time gross settlement system. And Ripple already has CBDC platforms. Well, if you guys don't know, CBDCs can be issued on Algorand and the Bank of Italy has tapped Algorand, their platform, as their official blockchain, their blockchain user for the platform for digital sureties. Italy has chosen Algorand as its public blockchain platform. So I want to show you all officially when it comes down to deploying CBDCs on Algorand. This was a part of this publication that was poking its head out to me so you can understand how the banks are going to handle CBDCs. And again, where the demand is going to be coming from for these ISO compliant cryptocurrencies. Again, if you're new to our channel, the reason why we focus on ISO 20022 is because this is going to be the same standard message that the CBDC central banks, all that bank money is going to be operating on exchanging for messages. So you can see here balance sheet dynamics for CBDCs situation is different if central banks issue tokens directly in the form of a token based retail CBDC token based retail CBDC. And I'm going to reveal for you guys the reason why we're seeing this de-dollarization trend happen everywhere. Um, they go on to say in figure three, seven, the status before the issuance of the S of the CBDC, the central bank balance sheet includes bank note B and deposit D held by households who finance their asset side, which is bank notes and deposits. You could see that right there, non-bank sector banking sector, but really it's three, eight figure three, eight right here to where you have the central bank issuing token based retail CBDCs. Three, eight shows the issuance of tokens by the central bank. In the case, tokens are legal tender. Okay, tokens are legal tender. The big thing that the World Bank and the IMF want is to make sure that crypto token crypto assets themselves don't become legal tender. But they want tokens. If we're talking about tokens here that are issued by the CBDC, those will be legal tender. So the central bank can now choose to offer additional funding to the banking sector in open market operations. However, the down t- downside is that this would result in the central bank acquiring further claims on the banking sector, given that central banks currently monitor the bank's health and entire system via supervision and oversight. An existing framework is in place to manage these additional claims. And also this this framework that we're speaking with you all about. Again, that's going to be applied in what's called Mika, M-I-C-A. This is a framework that's going to be duplicated and used every everywhere in the EU and as well, of course, uh, in the UK. So to give you guys understanding, the EU allocated $200 billion to Italy to be used for co-grants and co-loans as a part of that recovery plan. And that's where Algorand is involved for the Bank of Italy. want to take this time, guys, for the person who is listening. I appreciate you because you are so blessed to make it to this part of the video. Be sure that you use a link in our description for what's called a decent wallet. This is a biometric security wallet. When you start getting serious about the security of your crypto, use a link in our description and save yourself some money this biometric security wallet actually allows you to hold all of your crypto offline away from hackers now the big thing about this is you're able to store four out of the five chosen five iso cryptos you could store xdc you can store xrp you can store xlm you can even store algorand okay So you can store a lot of different uh, assets here. Be sure that you use the link in our description. And I believe there's usually a free shipping going on for all UK, US, EU and Japanese listeners. So be sure that you use our link in the description. Now, here's the main piece I want to talk with you guys about the US and this US rep. This is one of the two main pieces. US rep mentions XRP's legal status as non-security. Beautiful. 
U.S. Congressman Tom Emmer earmarks Ripple's court victory against the SEC as an example of regulatory abuse by the agency. And guys, we're going to be looking at the official piece, this this record here of where Emmer does mention XRP. Tom Emmer in the argument noted that the SEC had sought to use a regulatory regulation by enforcement approach in the crypto space. While the agency has clamped down on dozens of crypto exchanges and firms, Emmer notes that the regulator has never finalized a single rule or regulation for the crypto industry to follow. Go ahead and take a look at it right here. This is the official release by Emmer. And I just want to read some of these excerpts for you so you can hear how he was he was getting on. He was look on top of that. Chair Gensler has developed a track record of going after actors like Coinbase, a publicly traded company desperately trying to survive and innovate right here in the United States instead of going offshore like so many are forced to do. Gensler has done this while missing the bad actors like FTX and Terra Luna. At a time when clear guidance is desperately needed, Chair Gensler instead spends taxpayer dollars praising himself for targeting celebrities like Kim Kardashian, while Sam Bankman Freed was running a Ponzi scheme right under his nose. What is worse is the SEC doesn't even have jurisdiction from Congress over this asset class to begin with. Yet the SEC has no shame in trying to expand the jurisdiction to swallow and destroy the crypto industry through regulation by enforcement. Last year, the SEC's director of enforcement admitted during a House Financial Service Committee hearing that the SEC pursues enforcement actions on entities that are actually outside of its jurisdiction. One of these extrajudicial enforcement cases was the SEC's landmark crypto enforcement case against Ripple, alleging that XRP is a security. In July, the Southern District of New York sided against the SEC, asserting that XRP is not itself a security. You heard that right. XRP is not a security. So big ups to, to Tom Emmer for what he does, letting people know what's really going on with the SEC. Last but not least, I want to keep this with you all. Do not forget the SBI CEO let you guys know every bank in Japan will use XRP by 2025. It's beautiful, folks. All right. And this is the last piece I want to go over with you all. Swift expected to use XRP for payments. Yes, sir. In a groundbreaking development that has caused waves within the industry, Swift has disclosed its partnership with R3. This effort aims to transform the cross-border landscape by integrating XRP into Swift's GPI platform. Folks, if you're new to the channel, we've always said that Swift really represents the legacy system. If you guys don't know, Swift is only messaging while RippleNet XRP provides liquidity and messaging. So what they're saying here is that and if you guys don't know, R3 is basically if you are a financial institution, a bank, anyone who wants to get involved with DLT or Web3, you tap R3 and they will get you involved. Well, Swift is aligning itself with, of course, R3 and they go on to say how how you have XRP working together, the integration of XRP through R3's core that has a potential to alleviate the strain on Swift's infrastructure, enhancing the overall system sta uh, stability. Swift and R3 have underscored their commitment to complying with the existing financial regulators and ensuring the highest level of security and transparency. Swift and R3 will need to collaborate to provide comprehensive training and support to onboard institutions onto their integrated platforms. Beautiful, guys. I hope you continue to accumulate more XRP. You are truly special. I appreciate you for really making it to this part of the video. Be sure that you hit the like button. Uh, hit the like button so that you can continue to receive more of these updates subscribe if you're new to the channel so you can have yourself a place to really discuss utility cryptos and as well hit that bell so you guys do not miss out on any more of these updates but with that being said i'll holler at you later peace